So, you can't find the research you need, now what? My name is Rochelle Witherspoon. I'm a librarian at UNB Libraries. Um, and this is my third time recording this video, so hopefully it takes this time. Uh, and here goes. Um, so, some research topics are really easy to search for, um, and you retrieve a lot of information with relatively little effort. As your topics become more complex, however, uh, or relate to smaller fields of study, you may need to start implementing more sophisticated searching tools to get what you need. Uh, in this video, I offer five quick tips on how to accomplish that. And diving right in with tip one, find synonyms. Probably the most impactful way you can expand your search results is by considering all of the various different ways in which someone might have phrased your topic. So while there are a few topics that only have one word to represent them, it's mostly not the case. Generally, there are many different ways to say the same thing. Uh, for instance, um, as will be the, uh, for instance, if your research topic uh, is the effects of mindfulness on traumatic stress and first responders, which is the example I'll be using throughout this video, um, the search terms you might want to include are mindfulness and meditation, stress-related anxiety and traumatic stress, uh, first responder, paramedic, firefighter, police officer, and of course there are more, but for the purposes of today's video, I'm gonna keep it at just those. Um, what I wanna to get to though is that including all of these words in your search, instead of, instead of just using one or two, will drastically increase the number of results you get and help you to really tap into the existing research on your topic. And if you find you're struggling to think of different words to express your concepts, um, take advantage of things like free online thesauruses just to browse for terms, um, or do some general searching in a database and read through titles, abstracts, um, or just use the, um, the autofill feature on the search boxes themselves to get inspiration as to what terms might be relevant to the quest to the topic you're researching. Okay, tip two is truncation. Um, and this tip is really about increasing the reach of each synonym you came up with in tip one. Um, so truncation is a tool that allows you to search for the root of a word and then just have the database fill in any possible endings. So for example, if my search term is meditation, that word could be meditation, meditate, meditating, or meditated, um, but I can search all of those terms just by shortening it down to meditat with an asterisk, um, which will take that root meditat plus any possible ending into the search results when you find them. Uh, the trick to using truncation is to make sure you truncate the word at the best possible place. Um, so, for instance, truncating the word meditating after the G um, is completely useless because there are no words that start with meditating and have other endings. You won't see the word meditating or meditatings or meditate, sorry, you won't see the word meditating -z, or meditating. -d. They just don't exist. Um, so you have to shorten it down further than that to make that, to make that truncation tool relevant. Um, on the other hand, if you shorten the word down too much, you end up including a lot of irrelevant terms. Uh, so for instance, if you shorted, if you shortened meditation down to, down to just M-E-D-I asterisk, you get words like medieval or medical, which are not the topic you're searching for. So always try to truncate a word enough to capture as many variations as possible while excluding any other words that may start with the same letters. Tip three, phrase search. Uh, phrase searching allows you to narrow your results by forcing a greater specificity in how the database, in database interprets the search terms you've included. Um, and what I mean by that is if you're searching the word first responder, um, you want the database to search first responder, not first and then responder somewhere else in the search, uh, which is what it will do by default unless you apply phrase searching. Uh, which you accomplish by adding uh, quotation marks around the term you're searching. Um, makes a huge difference in the results you get. 
uh, both in terms of relevance and quantity. Okay, uh, moving along, tip four, use Boolean operators. Uh, Boolean operators are commands that tell the database how you want your synonyms and the components of your question to be combined in the search. Um, so you're probably aware that simply typing all of the possible terms related to a research question into the database willy-nilly will not be an effective way to perform a search. You don't just randomly throw words into it and press enter. Um, instead, what you want to do is combine the terms in a meaningful way so that the database uses one term from each part of your question to bring back search results. Um, so while there are actually several different types of Boolean operators, uh, I'm going to focus on just two of them for this video, the ones that you should be using and searching on a regular basis, um, and those are OR and AND. So, OR um, is used to combine synonyms in a search. So when you search first responder or paramedic, um, what you're telling the database to do is retrieve any item in the database that includes either one or both of those terms in it somewhere. Um, and in this way, you end up creating a single search line that captures all of the terminology related to that component of your research question. Um, and you can really beef this up by doing first responder or paramedic or firefighter or police officer. Uh, there are very few limits on how many terms you can, how many synonyms you can include uh, when you create that or string. Uh, and, on the other hand, is used to combine the different components of your research question. Uh, so in this case, first responder is one component and mindfulness is another. Uh, and what you do when you search first responder and mindfulness is you're telling the database to retrieve any item in the database that includes both terms, but neither one alone. And this narrows down your search results really, really well and also make sure that a whole bunch of relevant stuff doesn't get included. Uh, for example, there's a lot of research on first responders that has to deal with things like um, injuries or, or uh, shortages or language, uh, languages spoken, those kinds of things uh, that aren't necessarily about mindfulness and wouldn't be relevant to the research question you're looking for. Just quickly testing my recording, okay. Um, yeah, so where these two Boolean operators, and nor, become really, really fantastic though is when you bring them all together uh, into a single search. Um, for example, you know, you take first responder or paramedic or firefighter or police officer and mindfulness and meditation and stress-related anxiety or traumatic stress. Uh, and when you do that, you capture just this nice little piece in the center of the Venn diagram that represents sorry, um, any item in the database that uses at least one term from each of those three circles in the Venn diagram, uh, which is basically any item in the database that is relevant to your research question, uh, or at least hopefully that will be the case. So yeah, um, and sort of like all together, what this does is it creates a single search that is the equivalent, equivalent of having done 24 individual searches and has the added benefit of having no duplication between those searches. Um, because you may search, you know, if you, did, if you did two searches, one that was like first responder and mindfulness, one that was first responder and meditation, those two things will overlap in the types of, res in, in the actual items they bring back. When you do it all in one search, you get rid of that duplication and save yourself the time of having to go through the same sets of results multiple times. Okay, tip five. Uh, search multiple databases at once. Um, so on our EBSCO database platform, which accounts for about 20% of the databases we use here at UMB Libraries, um, it's possible to search multiple databases simultaneously. Excuse me. For instance, in the case of this research question, um, I'd want to look for databases in psychology, occupational therapy, and probably in medicine. Um, and we have databases on all of those topics as at, on the EBSCO platform, um, in this case, PsychInfo, SportDiscus, and CINAHL. Um, and I'll show you how, all, how to do all of this and how to use all of the previous tips uh, on that platform in just a minute or two. But first, I want to go through this proof of concept. Uh, so, before I recorded this video uh, the first time, 
I performed each of these searches in one of our EBSCO databases. And I want to take a moment to show you how much of a difference these commands make in a live database search. Uh, so searching just first responder, as is, no quotation marks, no asterisks, uh, produces 2,938 results. Add in quotation marks, decreases the results to just under 500, um, eliminating the noise that would have been produced by items in the database that included the words first and responder separately. Um, adding an asterisk inside the quotation marks uh, for that same search term um, has a significant but opposite effect and increases the number of results to just under 4,000, uh, which is actually more than we got in that first initial search. Um, this is a good thing though, because we know that all of these re er, results have the word first responder in them somewhere, or first responders, um, which is absolutely relevant to the topic we're searching. Um, so, and just before you get, you know, super worried about 4,000 results, because that's crazy, uh, for anything other than a knowledge synthesis paper. Um, when you add in that second Boolean operator, that AND, uh, it really does narrow things down to only results in the database that have first responders as they relate to, in this case, mindfulness. Um, so we get down from 4,000 results, which is wildly unreasonable, uh, to just 24, which is totally doable. It takes, you know, a few minutes to scan through titles to pick the ones that are relevant to you and your topic. Um, so you can see here, just how significant uh, each of these tools is as you apply them. Um, yeah, so hopefully this convinces you that I'm more than just a librarian saying, hey, use databases correctly. It's like this actually makes a difference to you and your results and your paper writing because it is so much easier and faster to write a paper when you have the best results the first time. And this only takes an extra few minutes as opposed to like trying to piece things together to make things work, uh, which takes hours and is painful and gives you bad marks. Um, so yeah, there's my, there's my pitch. Uh, so all that being said, uh, what does this actually look like in a real database? Um, and that's what the rest of this talk is going to be about. Um, so, uh, to start my search, I opened up the EBSCO database, uh, academic search premier in this case, uh, which is like a nice, well-rounded multidisciplinary database. Um, offered on the EBSCO platform. I then proceeded to put all of the terms related to the first concept in my research question in, uh, sorry. I then proceeded to put all of the terms related to the first concept in my research question, uh, which in this case uh, was first responders, into the first block of that search, uh, so that first search bar, um, and connected those terms with the Boolean operator or, because in this case they're synonyms. Um, you can see here in my search that I've included asterisks and quotation marks uh, to account for truncation and phrase searching. Um, and I've also capitalized that or in between the terms, uh, both because that allows me to easily differentiate it from the actual search terms I'm using um, and, become, and because some databases are required to be capitalized, um, but all databases will accept capitalization. So it's just easier to always capitalize than to remember which databases care and which ones don't because uh, I don't know about you, but I just can't be bothered to be that specific if I don't have to be. So that's what that looks like. Um, in this next slide, you can see that I then did the same thing again with my other two components, mindfulness and stress related, where I've just put them into one block of the search and connected them with or. Um, and the AND comes into this because every time you move down a box in the search, it defaults to connecting by AND. You can see that under to the, to the left side of the search boxes, there's that AND feature. Um, you can change it if you want to, but mostly don't. Uh, so there we have our ANDs and ORs, our phrase searching, our truncation. Um, and now the last piece is adding in that search multiple databases at once, uh, which is really, really easy. You just click on the choose databases button which appears above the search boxes. It will bring up a window that looks like this. And you go through and select the ones that you're interested in. Um, in this case, I think I kept Academic Search Premier and I added on APA Psych Info, uh, Sport Discus, and CINAHL, which is the Cumulative Index for Nursing and Allied Health. Um, so I did that and then I really just pressed enter and ran my search. 
and got a total of 61 results, which is not too shabby. And you can see that immediately these results are relevant to my research question. Um, and it's not just the first two, several of like the first five or 10 uh, were great. And then you can keep going through and picking out the ones that are good after that. Uh, they do sort by relevance, so the best stuff's at the top. Um, but going through 60 articles by title is not super hard, doesn't take very long, because you can pretty quickly pick out what you want to keep and what you want to lose. So, that is database searching in a nutshell. Uh, as a quick recap, um, things I covered in this video were the use of synonyms to cast a wider net in your, in your database searching, use of truncation to incorporate different forms of your search terms into your search, use of phrase searching to force the database to only retrieve items that use the exact phrase you've searched, uh, use of Boolean operators to tell the database how to combine your search terms when it brings back results, um, and the use of the Choose Databases feature to allow you to search multiple databases simultaneously. Um, and when all of these things are used together, they should help you to obtain a single search that is both precise and comprehensive. Um, as you gain practice and experience in performing this kind of searching, you'll find it only takes a couple minutes. Um, these better, sort of like these better, more complete searches um, save you time and paper writing, as I've said before, uh, because having good evidence just makes the things just makes things easier. Um, and with all that being said, uh, again, my name is Rochelle, Rochelle Witherspoon. If you have any questions about anything discussed in this video, or if you run into trouble finding research that you need, uh, I hope you'll reach out to me at rwithers at umb.ca, and I will do my best to assist you. Uh, so thank you for watching, and have a great day.